You cannot see the kingdom of God. I believe sometimes, not sometimes, I believe the reason why we are struggling with many a thing, we are not even advancing, we are not born again. We want to discuss truth, theological truth. We want to say this and that. And Nicodemus knew many things. Nicodemus was a teacher in Israel. He could teach you many things. But Jesus says, even though he was a teacher, Nicodemus was not born again. And as she says, the great deception upon a human mind is because I know certain doctrines. I'm born again, I'm righteous. Yes, yeah, as a teacher in Israel. And Jesus says, don't even talk to me about truth. You need to be born again. The reason why we're in, a, we're in a state that we are not moving, I can say that the root of it, we are not born again. We, we have not experienced this new birth experience. Now Nicodemus was so convicted that he utters foolishness to Jesus. He says, how can a man go back into his mother's womb when he is old? And sometimes when we are convicted, we try in our minds to make excuses why we have not yet done what God says. All we are doing is we are repeating, that actually inspiration says, that's naturally in the human heart. That when God convicts us, like Nicodemus, we come up with some excuse. Oh Lord, but if this did not happen, then I would have not done that. Or had not that temptation come, Lord, you know I wouldn't have done that. Or oh, had, had, had the person not spoken to me like that, then I would have not spoken to them like that. But you know, Lord, that I'm not, I would have been faithful had it not been for that. Who are you deceiving? You are not deceiving heaven. You are not deceiving God. The only person that's been deceived, you are deceiving yourself. Friends, I truly believe amongst present truth, Seventh-day Adventists, we really need to examine our hearts and ask ourselves, what are we doing here? What are we doing professing three angels' messages? What are we doing as Seventh-day Adventists? Seventh-day Adventists is not a Roman Catholic. He is not a Baptist. He is not a Methodist. Seventh-day Adventists are set in the world as light bearers, as watchmen. To them a shining wonderful light from the Word of God. What is our purpose? Is it just merely to live life? Some young men become seven adventists and they're cold, like the world, merely to get married and have children. What is your goal? And then when they get that, they realize that that does not bring satisfaction. What is your goal of being a seven day adventist? What is your goal? What is your purpose? Is it just merely, oh, I need to be a part of a club? Seven day adventism is not a club. There's many clubs in the world you can join, not this movement. Yes, our leaders have made this movement like a club. But it is not a club. What is your purpose? How can we go through week after week after week, no advancements? And I'm saying, you know, I thought of it. I said, Lord, thank you for your spirit. Yesterday we read that verse that the spirit, the quotation where she talks about the spirit, and it's his work to change the life. And I said, Lord, how, how does your spirit, what patience does your spirit have with our stubborn hearts? How, how, how many times you, you tell us, and I know I can tell certain people three, five, six times to do something and they don't do it. And I say, Lord, how do you cope with that when you convict them? I'm saying, I feel a certain way. I tell them six, I must tell them about six times before they do something. Friends, we really need to examine our hearts. I tell you, God is pleading with us. God is pleading. The burden of his heart is for us. Like the Jewish nation, Jesus is pleading. And you, you, might, you might think, I'm yet talking. If your eyes would be open, you would see the spirit angels. And even me, I, I would have no excuse. God would say, you knew these things. How could you go against my will? Friends, we really need to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, what is the purpose of becoming a Seventh-day Adventist? What is my true purpose of embracing present truth, the first, second, and third angel? Is it just to love life, to, to, get, to, to love life and just hope heaven's my home? Especially us who have professed present truth, who profess to be a part of a ministry proclaiming present truth, what is our goal? What is your great purpose of life? 
Friends, we really need to examine ourselves. I know by God's grace, in some degree, I understand what's my goal. Prepare people. And if I, if I, I told the Lord, if Lord, I, somewhere along the pot, my feet may slide, put me off to sleep before that ever takes place. I would rather rest in the grave in Jesus than to live a few more years and be lost. What is your goal of living? Oh, my goal of living is to, to get a family. My goal of living is to get money. My goal of living is to get a car. My goal of living is to be satisfied. Is that, is that, 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 is that the purpose of life? Is that the purpose of becoming a Seventh-day Adventist? So, that, that, is, that is the mind, thank you, that is the mindset of Babylon. And there are Babylonians today within Seventh-day Adventism, within present truth, the same mindset of Babylon. I want to become rich. What is, your, what is your purpose? I remember a minister was talking, and he was sharing that he was doing studies and doing evangelistic series. And there was one man who was attentive, coming night after night after night. But then he noticed that man stopped coming. And so because they had already made contact, he went to his house and he found out like, what is it you no more come in? And through their conversation, he heard that the man thought, this is what he thought, that if I become a seven day Adventist, I'm gonna have to give up everything that I have. I have to give up all my money, every little thing that I have, I must give it up to the church. You know what the man said, the evangelist? He said, what you believe is true. He, he said to him, what you tell is true. Only thing is, you don't give it to the church. Jesus, God, is gonna require everything you have. Everything. Are we willing to give up everything? Are we willing to give up everything? You should examine your heart. Friends, I don't, God is pleading. God is pleading. And I don't believe he's going to plead forever. The closer we come to the crisis, his voice is going to become louder, but some of our hearts are going to become more stubborn. Because light, once rejected, becomes easy to reject the second time. I'm saying if I hear God's voice and he says to me, do A, and I do it, when he tells me to do B, I'm in a better position to do it. But if he says, do such and such, speak to such and such, and I don't do it, when he speaks to me the second time on another subject, it's more likely that I'm gonna disregard his voice. That's Bible.